guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Karen and welcome to Karen's Nitpicks. Um, if you're new here, I'm Karen. Um, I am a pretty novice level knitter at this point. Um, I started knitting back in October 2022 and i have just been kind of tracking my progress here sharing everything that i'm working on and just getting into the crafting world so if you like that kind of content and you want to see more podcast videos and hopefully eventually some other types of videos of me trying to learn <laughs> new skills i um will be sharing all of that here with so feel free to like and comment, um, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more from me. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So I guess we'll just get started. Move my water out of the way. So let's see, let's see. It's been a little bit since I've been on this channel to do a podcast. So I guess I can start with a couple of updates for you. So first things first, um, if you've noticed, I have not been able to keep up with my bi-weekly posting schedule. And that is because I just don't knit that fast. <laughs> so I feel like it doesn't make sense to put out an episode where I don't have any finished objects or I haven't made a ton of progress on my whips. So I think I'm going to shoot for doing the podcast once a month so that I have enough time to gain some progress to share with you. Um, I think that makes more sense for me. And then outside of that, I think I will try to shoot for doing one video each month that is something else, if that's a vlog or it's like a different kind of craft, maybe sewing or since I am taking sewing classes this week, I start my sewing classes this week. <laughs> Um, so, you know, you can learn to sew with me, you can knit a full project with me, something like that. That is kind of what I am thinking right now. So, yeah, so I don't know. Let me know what you would prefer to see for the other videos for the month. Um, leave a comment below. I am happy to <laughs> take your suggestions or feel free, you know, you can always like dm me on instagram i always check my messages so that would be great too i'll leave my username over here somewhere um and then yeah i think that's it so yeah that's the big change here i guess is i'll just be making podcasts once a month and then trying to do something different in between that um hopefully now once i start my sewing classes it'll be easier because i'll have other things to work on I won't just have knitting projects so we'll see yeah I think that's it so I have a couple things to share today some finished objects finally <laughs> it's been like two months since I finished any of my knitting projects uh, and then I still have some whips one new whip and then progress on some of the other ones handful of acquisitions and then I want to also share some of my upcoming knitting plans with you because we are like halfway through February now and I haven't gotten through my winter knitting plans as quickly as I was hoping to so I think I need to make some adjustments so I guess I want to get your thoughts on it so with that being said I think we'll just get into it I am like sweating it's like 60 degrees out today and I just had to go to the post office to drop off some Poshmark orders and I it's like so hot and I was sweating on when I got back from the post office so first thing 
Well, oh, okay. I know I would normally start with my finished objects, but I grabbed the wrong thing. So I'm going to start with my whips first because that's where I'm at right now. So whips first up is the blanket that you've seen me working on for like three months now but it is actually almost finished <laughs> i've made a ton of progress on this and it's all it's it's almost done so my big giant beautiful blanket my cumberland blanket is here it's done almost done and i am really really happy about it so i'm not going to talk about the yarn because I have talked about it in every single podcast up to this point so if you want to hear about the yarn you can watch any of my previous videos but I will talk about I guess how I feel about this project now that it is almost completed so I have been working on it for I started it in November oh my gosh that's a long time yeah I guess it's been like three months started it like midway through November. It was supposed to be a Christmas gift for my boyfriend's parents because I wanted to get them. I started I started knitting around Christmas, so I wanted to knit something for them. But um, a blanket is just a huge, huge undertaking and I did not finish it, obviously. Um, I really, really enjoy the pattern. Every time I work on it, I love it. And it definitely was like slow, slow going when I first started it. But now where I'm at right now, I'm almost done. And it's been a really, really nice knit to work on. I've really enjoyed it. So I'm very glad to be almost done with it. And I just I'm looking forward to finally gifting it. <laughs> so I have plans to see my boyfriend's parents this, not this weekend, the one after. So I will be able to hand it off finally. So I'm in the home stretch. So I have four or five balls of yarn left over now at this point. I think I've probably knitted 40 inches or so and the goal was to make it like 60 inches and I think I don't think I have enough yarn to do full 60 inches and then it has like a braided um like fringe around the edge so I think what I'm gonna do at this point is take one or two balls of yarn cut out enough pieces to make the fringe and then whatever is left I will use to make to knit whatever is left of the blanket pattern and cast off and then that's pretty much it so I have a feeling I can probably get through maybe like 12 to 16 more knitted rows and then I'll probably have to start working on the trim so I mean I really am like in the home stretch I have to work on it probably tonight, tomorrow, Friday, and then I think by the weekend I will be finished with it, which is amazing and so exciting. I, I really enjoy this blanket and I'm so glad I took it on, but I am probably never going to gift someone a blanket again because it's, it's too much of like a time commitment, I think, for a gift, so... I think in the future for gifts, I will be sticking to like hats and socks, things that are quick. So yeah, but I mean, this was, it's, it's been a really nice product to work on. So I'm glad that it's almost finished and um, yeah, and that's it. So I guess we'll move on to my next whip because I have two more to show you. So next up is another um work in progress that you have seen before so this one should not come as a surprise or anything but i have certainly made quite a bit of progress on it which is great so this is my sweater number 23 by my favorite things knitwear um yeah 
we're making some good progress on this one. I'm really happy about it. So I started this in December, maybe at the end of December, like right after Christmas, because I wanted to make something for myself after doing so many gift knits. And I had had my eye on this sweater pattern and the yarn also. I fell in love with this color after seeing someone else knit with it, knit this sweater with it. So I immediately knew that it was the right option for me. So yeah, here I am. So I, I think the last time I shared this, I maybe was just about to join in the round. Um, I don't think I had just yet. So I have officially joined in the round. I have knit probably, I don't know, 23 or four centimeters from the neckline cast on edge. And I think I have to go 37 centimeters. So I'm in pretty good shape. I'm almost done with this section of the body and then I can move on to the ribbing, which is great. Um, and then after that, it's literally just sleeves and the collar. So I think that's pretty good. This project has been honestly really nice to knit on. I really like the yarn. It's so soft and thick. I just love the way that it feels. It's not uncomfortable to knit with. It feels really nice on my hands and it's just a great like chunky knit. Not chunky I guess. Thick knit. It's a nice thick knit. So I think it's going to be great to have come fall because unfortunately it's just like way too warm to wear like heavy sweaters. This is a cotton sweater and I'm sweating right now filming so I just don't know how much use my sweaters are going to get moving forward but it's a problem for another time I guess. Um, as far as the pattern goes it's really easy I think the instructions are very clear. The only things that I feel like I had trouble with um, was purling through the back loop which we did like on the back yoke to create the increases. Um, that was the only thing I felt like I needed to Google and then everything else was perfectly fine. So I think it's been really easy knit. I don't know that it would have been a good knit for my very first sweater. I had knit the novice slipover from Petite Knit before this and I feel like because I had that background on a drop shoulder construction and made this one a little bit simpler to knit but I think if this was my first sweater project it might have felt a little bit difficult. Another thing about this is that I did my purling in the Norwegian style which was very helpful. I think we're going quicker but and I think it did help my tension a little bit but I don't know that it's like the best method for me personally because I feel like it's my pearl stitches are still a little bit loose. So I don't know that I, I don't know that I would do it again the same way. I probably would stick to like regular purling and just make a bigger effort to pull the yarn a lot tighter for my pearl side. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I have to find a way to purl comfortably, but also be able to tension really well because it's one thing I've been consistently noticing is my purl stitches are really loose or inconsistent. They have inconsistent tension when I have to knit like a full purl row. If I'm doing like ribbing or anything like that, it's perfectly fine, but doing the full purling row, I find I have inconsistent tension. So that's an issue I'll have to look into and figure out how to make it better other than just practicing, right? So a couple other things, uh, the yarn. I've mentioned in a couple of videos, this is Lamana 
Comal Grande and then La Mana Premia. Beautiful yarns, really comfortable. I really like the mohair. I think it's very nice and soft. Um, and I think it makes for a really beautiful fabric together. I also have been, I don't know if you can see from here, but I'll do a close up. I've been putting stitch markers to track my progress on the body because I feel like the body gets so boring to work on and it's really hard to see your progress. So I started adding stitch markers to just be able to remind myself that I am actually making progress and it's definitely been helping to make it go faster, but it also like doesn't feel that great because then I'll look back and see like, oh, I only did like four rows the other day and that doesn't feel good. So I don't know. <laughs> I have to figure out what's a good method for feeling or tracking my progress, I guess. But yeah, separate issue. So right now I'm using five millimeter needles and then I think I go down to four millimeter needles to do the ribbing and yeah i mean overall i think it's a nice pattern i would definitely make it again like not that i need another sweater like this but i do think the pattern is like very straightforward and easy to work on that i would make it again if i wanted to so yeah i mean overall i'm really happy with this i can't wait for it to be done because this will be my very first like full sweater the only other garment that I've made was my novice slipover, and it was good, but it's just, it's not something that fits into my wardrobe easily, so I don't wear it very often. But this, I think, is a piece that I will definitely wear, so I'm really excited to finish it. So, that's my sweater number 23, and I guess we'll move on to my next whip. Okay, so I have one more work in progress to share. This one doesn't have a ton of work on it yet. I cast it on like the end of January or beginning of February. So it's only been about two weeks that I've had it on my needles. And to be quite honest, I only worked on it like the one day. I haven't worked on it since then. So. This is my novice cardigan chunky edition and I really like it so far. I am of course in love with the color. It's just so stunning. So so stunning. I wanted a sweater in this color so badly. Um, I decided to go for a cardigan instead of a sweater but like I think it's it's perfect. It's like, ugh, I love it so much. I cannot wait to have this finished. So yeah, um, so Novice Cardigan, Chunky Edition. I am using seven millimeter needles, I believe. Can never find it. Seven millimeter needles. By yarn that I'm using, it's from Hobby. I have the Friends wool and then the friends kid silk mohair um, both in the color sapphire they make a really beautiful fabric together and i'm very excited i think the yarn i initially when i did my gauge swatch i thought the yarn might be a little bit too thin for the pattern but recounting my stitches and looking at it again looking at it again i think it will be fine so I decided to just move forward with casting on and so far it looks fine I don't think it's too loose so and if it is like I guess what's really the big deal it'll just be a little bit more like oversized which whatever that's not a big deal to me personally so this is my first circular yoke piece and it's good so far it goes by really quickly which i like i i don't know <laughs> it's tricky for me personally because of course it's a cardigan so there's gonna be a lot of purling which i don't love but at the same time like 
I just wear a lot of cardigans in my day to day. It's most often my go-to piece. I prefer to layer with a cardigan versus wearing a full-on sweater. So making the cardigan version makes more sense for my wardrobe, but it's going to be a lot, a lot of purling. <laughs> so we'll see, but I will get over it because I do think like the finished object is going to be worth it having a beautiful cardigan in this color. So whatever. I mean, so circular yoke, it's been very, very comfortable to knit on. Learning like the increase pattern for it is a lot. It feels like it's a lot when you're doing the increases, but then once you get through that row, like it's very comfortable. So I think it'll be fine. Plus it's on seven millimeter needle. It's pretty thick needle. So it goes by really quickly and I don't know, it's pretty enjoyable so far, but we'll see. So I haven't made much progress on it, but I do, I am looking forward to continuing to work on this. I think as soon as my blanket is done, um, I will spend a little bit more time on this, but I just really, it's important that I make more progress on the blanket and on my sweater 23 because I've had those on my needles for quite some time now. So yeah, I mean, that's really all there is to say. I haven't done much work, so there's not much going on, but so far so good. I'm really excited to continue working on this and have this added to my wardrobe very, very, very soon. So that's all. Oh, and the pattern. Let me talk about the pattern actually very quickly. It's good. It's very beginner friendly, so it's not written with any like abbreviations or anything like that, which if you, if this is like the very first piece that you are knitting ever in your entire life, perfect. I think it's a really great piece to have. For me, now that I'm used to the abbreviations, it is a little annoying <laughs> having to read everything and not be able to just quickly look and see like what each row is supposed to be but I think honestly it's not a big deal and it's something that I just have to get over her <laughs> personally um, but other than that I mean petite knit her patterns are always very well written um, she has tons of video tutorials to go along with her patterns so like it's super easy and such a you know I think she has plenty of resources available if you are having trouble with the pattern so I am not at all concerned about that. So, yeah, I mean, that's it. I'm done talking about this. There's nothing else to share. But hopefully next time we chat, I will have a lot more progress on this. So, we'll see. So next up, I'm going to move on to my finished objects because I have two this month, finally. Um, so the first up is my... Vanilla socks. Yay. I love these. I am so, so happy with these. They look so cute. <sighs> these were incredibly satisfying to make. I, I completely understand why people like making socks. I think these are just, it's, ugh, it's so satisfying. So incredibly satisfying to make socks. So, I um, used the vanilla sock pattern from the Crazy Sock Lady. For yarn, I used Hobby's Silly Socks Flower Pop in the color Peony, and I knit these on 2.25 uh, millimeter needles. Millimeter, yeah, nine inch circular needles. And it was just a really lovely experience, but it was definitely, I could tell the difference right away, I guess, um, between the first sock and the second sock. So the first sock, I had to follow the, her video tutorial and the pattern, like, religiously. I felt like every time I got to a new step, I had to watch the video and I had to, like, just check back in versus the second sock, I don't think I looked at the video until I 
got to the heel flap and then after that I only looked at it for the heel flap, the heel turn, and then the Kitchener stitch at the end for the toe. So I felt, I mean obviously everything else is like super easy, just stuck in it the whole way around and then um, I looked at the pattern for like how many stitches to pick up for the gusset and how many like increase and how many decreases to do for everything but other than that I pretty much like did partially by memory partially from the pattern and it was like so fantastic I feel really 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 proud of these socks so one thing I think the biggest difference on these socks is my heel flap on my first sock I guess I did it wrong <laughs> I don't know I feel like it's so tight and it just doesn't look the same <laughs> as my second socks heel flap um, and I think the second sock the heel flap is done perfectly and correctly so I don't know I guess I just was not as comfortable and I did a couple of things wrong but it's fine it was definitely a learning lesson and I mean I think it looks great and my heel turn like looks great on both socks everything else looks really nice um, I really enjoy doing the Kitchener stitch at the end especially now that I learned um, Italian bind off from my next finished object that I'll share I feel like I am just in a really good spot where I have a good technique. I feel really comfortable with the nine inch circular needles and I am just, I'm a sock knitter. I love it. I have a couple more balls of sock yarn, which I will talk about later. And um, I have already been planning like what sock yarn I wanna buy, what are my next socks that I'm gonna cast on, is there any other sock patterns I need to make or need to purchase. So. I'm excited. I have um, a color work sock pattern from the Petite Knitter and then I also have the sock patterns from Ozetta. Um, but those I would have to buy like different yarn for. So I'm not going to work on those just yet. I do have one other ball of sock yarn from Hobby um, because I would really like to make a pair of bread socks. So that's going to be my next sock pattern that I work on. But yeah, I mean, overall, it was really good, really fun to make both, you know, a full pair of socks. And I ended up, it was like a 100 gram ball of yarn. And I ended with a good amount left. I don't know how much I used exactly, but I definitely ended with a pretty decent amount of yarn. So um, I will just save it and, I don't know, use it for something else in the future. So... Yeah, so those are my socks. I'm really happy with them. I'm, I'm so happy that I was able to finish a pair of socks finally. Um, and I've already worn them. I've been trying them on. They've been washed and blocked and um, they're really comfortable. I think the sizing was very good. I maybe would make them like a little bit longer in the future um, on the foot part. But I mean, it's like such a minor change you know I would add like I, I don't even know like a centimeter it's literally nothing it just feels like on the second sock I think like the heel is a little bit like the heel is not in where my heel is so I probably would have just made it a little bit longer but honestly I think it's perfectly fine outside of that so so yeah I think that's it so I guess we'll move on to my next finished object. So my last finished object is my balaclava number one. Um, if you saw my Instagram or my shorts videos, I already showed um, my finished piece there. So um, my Instagram is linked down below. And of course, you can always check out my shorts on my channel homepage. So those are available to you but 
I finished my balaclava, which is so fun. I have been dreaming of having a balaclava for several, what? <laughs> several years now, but they, I guess, are just not that popular in the US, at least not cute ones like this. So um, I never really got the chance to purchase one and then so as soon as I started knitting, I knew that it was one of the first things I wanted to make, and it was. <laughs> so I used, of course, yeah, sweater number one, sweater number one, balaclava number one from My Favorite Things Knitwear. For the yarn, I used um, Sunday from Santa Garn and the soft silk, no, thin silk mohair from Santa Garn, both in the color um nope 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 it's soft silk mohair from knitting for olive and sunday from santa scarn that's what it is both in the color banana or dusty banana something like that and it was good i think this was made so the pattern called for four millimeter needles and i used four and a half because the yarn i was using was a little bit too thin for my yeah for the four millimeter needles, so I just sized up half a size, or one full needle size, and it was fine. Yeah, it was perfectly fine. But for the ribbing, I think you go down to like a two and a half millimeter needle, something like that. I really love the way that the stitch pattern looks on it when I'm looking at it, but this was a tough project to want to pick up. <laughs> I don't know why I did not have a lot of fun making this I just didn't enjoy it I don't know I don't know what it is because it really is so pretty and I love it but I did not have fun making this I don't know it's very pretty though I love the way it looks and I've seen recently a lot of people making sweaters in the same stitch pattern or very similar stitch pattern I also saw a pair of pants and I was like, ah, oh, that looks so great, but I don't know that I could do it again. I'd have to really like push through and be excited about the finished project. Otherwise, I don't, I don't know that I'd be able to finish those, um, but it was good. And I also learned Italian bind off for the bottom ribbing and for the front edge ribbing and I'm very glad that I did because number one, it's super easy once you get the hang of it. And number two, I love how clean and crisp it looks. Um, the only issue is it's not a stretchy bind off. So I have to be careful with it in the future. Um, I definitely made the bottom ribbing way too tight. So I do have some trouble getting it over my head now i think blocking it did help but yeah it takes it takes a couple tugs <laughs> before i can get it comfortably over my head so i made the front edge the front ribbing edge a little bit looser so that one's much more comfortable i have a tough time getting it over my head so what else and then i also think i guess what I am torn about is I feel like it would be really nice and warm and cozy because of the mohair and the merino, but a lot of air gets through it when I'm wearing it. So there was a day where it was like 10 degrees outside and I tried wearing this because obviously that is like the only time that makes plenty of sense to wear it, but a little bit too much air was getting through. So I think... For this one, I'm going to line it possibly with like felt or something, fleece, um, and I think that will solve that problem of course, but in the future, if I were to make this again, I would probably use a thicker yarn, um, something that is probably a little bit closer to the gauge that um, she uses in the pattern. But I mean, it was, it still is fine and it works and I'm happy with it, but that's something that I would, that's 
like a change I would make I guess for myself in the future is just use different yarn that won't feel quite so airy um but it was good I'm glad that I was able to finally make this and I will probably make a bunch more I might try different options um because this was if I had been focusing on it, it would have been really quick <laughs> but I wasn't but I did enjoy it and I love wearing it also so yeah I'm very happy to have this finally in my repertoire of finished hand knit items <laughs> okay so that was all of my finished objects um I have one acquisition and then I think I'll move on to some of my upcoming knitting plans and kind of why I'm conflicted about what else to make so first up is I got some more yarn um I think in my last podcast I mentioned that um I wanted to buy this sock yarn the lion brand sock ease because it was only available for a limited time and I wanted to make sure I could get my hands on it before it was not available anymore and I did <laughs> I um, ended up buying it like just after Christmas I think for myself because I just wanted to have some extra sock yarn especially after I had finished my sock my first sock I felt like I knew I really enjoyed making socks so I was like I'm just gonna get some sock yarn and I think socks are a good kind of like palette cleansing project to do in between the more complex more um, time-consuming projects so I figured if I'm gonna have a yarn stash it should be full of sock yarn instead of like random balls of yarn is my thought so that is what I'm thinking. <laughs> so I ended up getting four balls of this um, Sock Ease yarn from Lion Brand. They were each like $10, I think, and they happened to be having a sale. Um, so I think I probably got them each for like 6 or $7 or something like that. It was a pretty good deal, honestly. <laughs> I guess they were, I think it, it might have been like 30% off and then you got an extra... 15% something like that I don't know I can't remember but yeah so I decided to get four um which maybe is overkill but because it's like only available for a limited time I was like I'll just get four it's fine so I got four colorways they are let's see let's look at this so they're each 100 gram balls they have 437 yards 400 meters it's 75% wool, 25% nylon, and it's a size number one, which is like a fingering weight. It's also machine washable and dryable, which is fantastic. Um, and so I got four colorways. So this first one is Manhattan. Um, they're all named after cocktails, which I thought was fun. <laughs> so this is Manhattan. Not at all similar to like what a Manhattan looks like, but I don't know, I guess that's fine. Uh oh, there's sirens coming. Sorry if you can hear those. <laughs> okay, the next one that I got, this one is called the is called Less Word, which is cute. I like it. I don't know. I liked the fun, like bright color ways. There was some that were very like dark and I was like, eh, I don't know, that doesn't feel right for me. So I got the fun ones. Um, they're all self-striping, obviously. And I think three of them are like long stripe patterns and then one of them has like a short stripe pattern. So I don't know exactly what those are gonna look like when they're knitted up because they didn't have any swatches, but I'm sure it would be fine. <laughs> so I'm not too concerned, but the self-striping ones I think will look pretty similar to these vanilla socks that I have already made um just in the colorways so yeah so this one is last word um this one is my tie they're all pretty similar they're all kind of different I guess and um this one I think is my favorite I think it's so pretty the colorways it's almost like 
jewel tones. It's very rich and deep. I think this one like definitely reminds me of a Mai Tai. So I am really happy with this one. I can't wait to, to make this pair. It's going to be so fun. And then the last one that I got is called Cosmo, which I don't know. It's kind of funny, right? Because like this is blue and a Cosmo is like pink. So I don't know why it wouldn't be I don't know, like they should have called it something else, like whatever a blue cocktail is, like a hurricane or something. I don't know. I I don't know. <laughs> I don't drink like fun cocktails like that, <laughs> so I'm not really sure. But yeah, this one's called Cosmo. It's pretty. It's like a light blue. It's got light pink and then kind of like a creamy color. This is the one that has short stripes, so I'm not sure what's going to be different about that but it does have like little short like lines little flex so i think it's probably going to have stripes with like almost like polka dots i guess kind of like the this green or like marled section i guess kind of like the green on my sock um is what i'm thinking so yeah I'm excited to try these and I think it'll be fun to have some sock yarn just laying around in my stash. Um, I didn't, I told myself that I didn't want to have a huge stash of yarn around, especially not sweater quantities and not like single balls that I can't use for like big projects. So I figured um, having a stash full of sock yarn was the easiest way to kind of balance that out, I guess. So yeah, I mean, that's actually it for my acquisitions. <laughs> so last but not least, I have, I guess, a couple of things that I want to, I don't know, get your thoughts on, get a second opinion on. If you recall my, um, what is it called? One of my previous podcasts in January, I went over my winter knitting plans, so I'll make sure I link it in the cards. I think they're on this side. It's hard to tell. <laughs> um, yeah, I talked about my winter knitting plans and I had quite a few things on my winter knitting plans, but I am still very new to knitting and I just don't really knit that fast. So it's, I, I mean, it's, midway through February I'm probably not going to get through a lot of my winter knitting plans and I'm feeling a little bit torn because of course I want to complete those projects <laughs> but I just don't know how much sense it makes so the ones that I think were priorities for me is going to be my other novice cardigan the mohair edition I definitely want to work on that um, I also would like to, so I am missing like a white turtleneck in my wardrobe. So I was thinking I was going to stick with making the winter pullover from Ozetta. Um, it's like a really thick uh, turtleneck, oversized turtleneck sweater, but I don't know. It just like is not even cold <laughs> anymore. It, like unfortunately <laughs> we're not going to talk about climate change or anything but obviously something's going on that it's 60 degrees today and it's February so I don't know how much sense it makes to make this turtleneck sweater I also had sweater number 18 on my wish list because I want to try making something that is a little bit more complex has is not so straightforward something that I have to experiment with like reading a chart for example um, I just think I feel ready to push myself into doing a more advanced knit and I feel like that is one that I would really value once it was completed so that was gonna be my kind of stretch goal and then I have a couple other things like I do want to make you know, more cardigans. The scallop, scallop jacket from Strika Cafe is high up on my list. 
cardigan number seven I would love to make because those are pieces that I know I would get a ton of wear out of because like I mentioned before I do wear a lot of cardigans I like to wear them you know with dresses in the spring with jeans skirts all kinds of stuff so they get a ton of use I wear them for work all the time um you know and I wanted to make a couple other things like uh I think it's the chestnut sweater from petite knit the chestnut dress the terrazzo neck all of these things that are very winter forward and I just don't think I don't know how much sense it makes so on the other hand I'm also thinking I want to switch to maybe doing some spring stuff maybe finish out my couple of sweaters finish out get my couple cardigans in and then switch to some spring stuff I don't know yet the other thing I'm thinking about is like if I want to have like camisoles and spring summer pieces to wear in the spring and summer I have to knit them in the fall and winter of course so I think another thing that I'm thinking about is I'm gonna knit for the coming season so knit opposite of what season I'm in so moving forward in the spring summer I would focus on knitting like my sweaters cardigans heavier knits so that they're ready and available for me to wear come fall winter and then to the opposite knit my summer tops camisoles lighter pieces in the fall and winter so that they are readily available to wear in the spring and summer that's kind of my thought and where I am thinking but <sighs> yeah I don't know I can't decide if it makes sense to knit like a turtleneck and like these heavy sweaters so I don't know let me know in the comments what you think if you think I should go and just knit the sweaters and wait until the fall to be able to wear them probably not even the fall like it'll probably be like November December before I get to wear them or if I should just wait until like August before I pass them on I don't know so yeah I guess that's really it honestly I don't have much else to share so I guess I'll leave it there thanks for watching I'm happy to be back podcasting and I hope to have a better more consistent schedule now that I'm not going to be podcasting every other week and I can experiment and do a little bit more interesting um, videos in between and hopefully have more progress to share with you also so that is all and I appreciate you sticking around if you've made it this far into the video and I hope to see you next time um, of course if you enjoyed this video please like and comment um, it really is helpful to know for me to know that you like what I'm creating and I'm always open to feedback so please feel free to share anything that you want to share with me um, subscribe if you'd like to see more of my podcast videos and more of the other types of videos that I'm making in the future and I think that is all so I guess that's it so I will talk to you guys next time bye